Good morning, everyone. So we are going to start the Tsunami Rouge Design Team Project. Um, I haven't started this yet because I've had so many other projects going on. So I figured I would go ahead and get this bad boy started so I can um, let her know that it is done. So I'm using two different sets from her and it is a combination of multiple parts of these sets but I'm using the um, Life of Bloom as well as Charming Fragments. They are both on her website and it's tsunamirose.net and it is in my description box. It's under design teams that I'm on and it's Tsunami Rose. So here are a couple of the file folders that I printed out. These were the only thicker paper that I had. I do have this, but I think this is a little too Thick, my printer won't take it. I can try my laser printer. It normally is much more finicky about the thickness of paper than my inkjet, so I don't think that's going to work. But I would really like to be able to use this, so I might just do some tracing um, and kind of put it on there. You know, not necessarily this. I would have to printed on much, much, much thinner paper. So, um, anyway, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, so here are some file folders. There are three. I only printed out two. This is the cover. This is actually, um, a sheet of paper from, um, Shabby Rose from Stamperia, and this is going to be the cover. So we're going to go ahead and fold that in half, and this is our cover. And we can fold everything in half while we're, you know, going over everything. And all oh, that is going to be so cute. I love it. Okay, so we're not going to fold those. We're going to cut those out. And that is embellishment. This is going to be the very first page um, and it is a it's a piece from her this one I believe is Charming Fragments. Nope. This one is a Life of Bloom. So we're going to fold that. That's the first page. All of these, um, everything I'm about to show you is from, I don't think I can zoom in too much more because I think it might, oh, that's the wrong direction. Maybe, there we go. Yeah, that's better. We'll just scoot over a little bit. Okay, so anyway, all of these that I'm showing you right now are from her Charming Fragments collection. Um, and so we're going to do a combination of folding in, folding out. And I want there to be 15 pages for inserts. So I'm not sure yet if this is going to, this might be too big. Well, if I put it like this, I think it's just barely bigger than the rest of the pages. So I might do that and then put something on this side. So we're going to go ahead and leave that like that. And I haven't figured out which one I want to be the center yet. I think I know, but I haven't figured it out yet. These are all still charming fragments. And I did um, get everything together and printed and everything before I turned the camera on. I figured it would save a little bit of time. This is some coffee dyed um, composition paper. Yep, I got this from Miss Emily over at um, Vintage Polka Dot. And um, I smelled it because that's how I know it's hers. Um, this is some avocado dyed paper. Uh, this one here is going to have to get trimmed or 
something because it's too tall and it's too wide. We can always fold it and make little pockets, but for now we're just going to kind of set it aside. This is also from Vintage Polka Dot, Miss Emily. It's some lined grade school paper. This is, yep, still charming fragments. Was it this one? No. I think it was this one. Yeah, I think it was this one. Uh, these are, no, this is Life of Bloom. Yep, this is Life of Bloom. And we're kind of doing uh, backwards, forwards, forwards, backwards, so we can um, have a little bit of diversity in the layouts. I like how this bled through on the other side. I don't know if y'all can see it. This paper is really thin. I'm not sure which paper this is. All of this dyed paper came from Miss Emily from Vintage Polka Dot. If it's dyed, it came from her. Except for the avocado. The avocado did not come from her. I don't remember where I got that. I got it sometime. Uh, well, I guess I can't really say last year because it wasn't last year. It was the year before. Um, okay. And now these are from this one and this one and this one. No. These two are from Life of Bloom, and this coffee here came from uh, another digital that I purchased, and um, same with this, came from another digital. These are all on sticker paper, so I can just cut these out and then put them pretty much wherever. And this, ha there's a little note that if you want to use, and that's why I printed these out, I thought they'd be really cute. But it says that if you want to use a hundred, a hundred, one point, a one and a quarter inch circle tabs, use the one inch punch and adhere together on the edge of a page. And I thought that was a really cute idea. So I believe I have a circle punch. If it cooperates with me, then we're good to go. Um, this one, I believe, let me pull it up real quick because I want to say this one is charming fragments, but to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. Um, let's see. Let my mouse is being funky. Um, do 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 do. I have to scroll all the way to the bottom because I actually took all of the different kits uh, because they're in pieces like because most people do that this is life of bloom it's not in charming fragments so this one is life of bloom and they're postcards um, and this is also on sticker paper although I did print some on heavier cardstock that my printer actually did take <laughs> this one is charming fragments as you can see right there also charming fragments and this is the heavier cardstock and then this is what's left of the 12 by 12 that I cut and I grabbed this I thought it would be fun to play with and I grabbed this because I'm not sure if I want to use it but I thought it would add an extra layer of texture into the um, book now I don't think I'm going to be able to use these, but they would make really cool covers. It, they would just be a little bit smaller than your normal journal because they are 8.5 by 11, not 12 by 9. So we're going to set that aside for now. And we're going to start figuring out what we want to do with our pages. Like, how do we want to situate them? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this. I know it's too big. I'll cut it down. 
or figure something out. So this is the middle one here. So everything else is going around this one. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out which one I want to go next to here, and I think I like that. So let's do that. And that actually works out well because these papers are similar in color. So. I think I want that one on the front. So let's do. Oh. We need to add these somewhere. Yep, we forgot those. Okay. And then, let's see, we can put you, actually, if we put this one here, you might actually be able to see this a little better. Oh yeah, it's still pretty light and faint such a pale pink. I'm trying to figure out where I want to put this. Maybe right here. And then there's this one here, which we need to figure out. Mm, I like this one better. Okay. So put it here, like that, and then try to figure out. Um, I think maybe fold it. I like the idea of folding it. So cut the height down. So let's grab, where did I put you? I've grabbed my trimmer a couple times and then moved it a couple times. Because I had to get underneath my printer. Um, because it did not like that paper. We're gonna go eight and a half here. All right. And then we can round the corners here. That way they match the bottom. Okay. Um, quarter? I think you're in between a quarter and a half. You are. Okay. 
Now they match. All right. And then, let's see. Unfold here. should be the guts of the journal. Ah, oh, why things? Of course, it's not going to stay that small if my last journal was any indication. Definitely not going to stay that small. All right, so something that I know I want to do is I want to add some lace here um, and here. But I think we're going to go super small because I don't want it to be too bulky. Like, I don't want it to take away from the cover. That, oh, okay. I think that actually is pretty perfect. And then we can also, because it's so small, we can also add this throughout the journal. Give me my glue. I did remember to repin it. Aren't you proud of me? I think I slept wrong because every time I turn my neck, it hurts so bad. Which is, oh man. I guess that's a good thing though because that means that I slept so soundly that I just didn't know. So that's really good. And I mean, I did wake up feeling quite refreshed. So that is a good thing. Also, something else that I've learned um, through other journal makers, ones that are way more experienced than myself, is um, sewing the paper on the pages um, that you turn makes it not as durable as if you glue the lace. Um, so I think that I will not be sewing the pages uh, now, also other things like cards or pockets or something like that, but the pages that you flip over and over and over again, I don't know that I'm going to um, sew those. I'm out. You were just out. There we go. I don't know how true that is. I just know that I've heard that from other more experienced journal makers than myself. And if you guys know, let me know. What do you think? I mean, it makes sense because you're putting a bunch of tiny holes into something so fragile as paper. And sometimes it's vintage and sometimes it's dyed, which is, makes it even more stressed. And sometimes it's just really thin paper. Oh, that looks really cool. And I don't know if I have any corners or not, but I think that would look really cool if I had corners. I don't know if I do. I'll have to look around. So we're going to take this same lace and we're going to kind of sprinkle it throughout. I want to add it to, I think, the top of this vellum. I think that would look really cute. I can't use fabric talk though. So let's see, what can I use? Um, I have PVA glue. It's just like not 
the bloop, 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 bloop. and I don't know how cleaned out this is which is why I took the lid off right in there my thing's all wonky I still haven't ordered that uh, that glue I said I was going to. I've been busy. I don't know if this will come out, but we're going to give it a shot. It's been sitting upside down, so it should be okay. I say that and then it doesn't come out. Come out, come out wherever you are. Here's a paper clip that might work. And I can reach in there a little bit further, I guess. Does y'all's glue ever get all clogged up? I might have to use a brush. This isn't coming out at all. Oh. Then again, I've had this glue for a minute. And it's not exactly like, I don't use it all the time, which is probably why it's, okay, I have to use a brush. Why it's um, like that. Uh, I think we'll go with a new brush. Well, not new, but not one that's down there. All right. I don't know what is going on with this. Oof. I think I'm actually making progress. Now that you guys are probably bored watching me play with glue. But hey, I mean, it's a learning experience, right? I'm not really sure how exactly, but we'll just pretend it is. I'm just trying to see if I can dig in there and see if I can actually see if it's going to come through or not. I mean, I'm going to use the brush now anyway. I've already glued it. So I guess that's the trick to getting it unclogged. Just go from the inside. Maybe. Yeah, that's definitely a trick because I can see the hole. I'm just trying to push some of this down in there. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, who is that character? Uh, Ducky from Land Before Time. Yep, yep, yep. I love that guy. He's so cute. Have y'all ever seen that movie? It's a super cute movie. I watched it when I was a kid. Uh, let's go with pillow. I don't need the ink. I do need the book though. Well, oh, look at that. It's so pretty. 
I might have to use this glue just, just so it doesn't close back up on me. Alright, so let's do this one real quick. Um, let's see. Oh. I'm going to go this way. Uh, where's my things? My cutty cutty things. Uh, I've lost my scissors. Oh, found them. So how do you guys put lace on vellum, if you do? I know some of you don't mess with vellum at all. But I definitely don't want to sew this because for one, it's really thin, but um, for two, it's not paper so I'm not sure how it's going to hold up and I want it to hold up so put a little bit more glue right here bloop, 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 bloop. all right Ooh, maybe we should do the bottom what do you think I think we should do the bottom too. I think we should do the bottom too. Ooh. Maybe I might have to sew this because it's like curling up on the other side. And then again, I might just keep having to press it down like this to keep it down. Not sure. Not sure. Alright, so let's do this side first. So anyway, now that I've been quiet for a minute, oh, did you get stuck again? Oh, hello. Oh yeah, there's a, see it right there. Probably not, you're probably like, it's clay. Anyway, there's this blob that got stuck in the nose of the glue. I don't know, maybe sewing might be easier. I don't know if it's more durable. Then again, I don't make a habit of putting stuff on vellum normally, other than tape, because that's how I adhere it to my 
stuff. Yep, we're definitely going to have to make some cards and set out of these book pages. Uh, let's grab my water. I don't know that I will need that again, but... use this glue. It's a good glue, it just gets closed up fairly easily, apparently. And now my thing's all wonky. Why are you wonky, thing? What happened? Oh no. Did I break it? Oh, nope, I just got stuck on the wrong side. Okay, I did not break it. Okay, let's see. So this will go like that. And then, let's see, what do we want to do here? We could do pockets or tags. You know, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside. Well, we could probably add a couple of pieces at least to some of the other ones. This middle page. I know I want these on the middle page. I just don't know what else I want on the middle page. Let's do that. All right, hold up. side. Yeah, I like that. why I get quiet when I glue. Like, is anyone else like that? That's like, um, if you're looking for a sign or something, uh, when you're driving, you have to turn down the radio because you can't hear the sign. Like, that's, the, that, that's like what it seems like to me. Just funny. Oh yeah, I definitely want to put more lace in there. Oh, I love that. Okay. Um, let's go with This one? I thought this was upside down because this is upside down, but this is right side up. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Um, oh, actually, let's punch out some tabs. Wait, do we want to put the... 
I don't think we're going to put the tabs on the same pages that we have lace on. No, definitely not. Are we? Do we want to? Oh my gosh, I don't know. What do we want to do, people? What do we want to do? Oh, I do know one thing that I want to do to help enforce this vellum. Um, because using the vellum as a page, uh, you definitely want to reinforce it because it will tear fairly easily. So I'm just going to take this lace here. It's a what? Excuse me. It's a wider lace. Let me pluck off of here. It's the one that we used um, in my last journal. And I'm just going to put it right down the middle. Just like so. Okay. You could do it on the outside too, but I already put the lace out there. here and make a straight edge because it's not straight. There we go. And kind of try to make it even. There we go. Now I like to use lace because it's a little easier when you're poking holes in it to put it in the signature. Uh, you can use fabric, obviously. Uh, I prefer lace if I'm reinforcing something like vellum. There we go. Oh, and you can see it from this side too, which is really cool. You know, I think this is glassine. I don't think this is vellum. The way that it's reacting to the glue is what makes me think feel like it's glassine. Because I have I have pages of glassine too. And they're up there. Uh, all my specialty paper is on my shelf up there. Oh, that is really cool. Okay, so that will look like that. And then like that, which kind of makes me want to put it on this side too. Let's do it. Okay. So trying to figure out how I wanted to cut it in half, but I think this is going to be the easiest way to glue it down and then cut it. cut it across the vellum and then we're going to use this same piece on the other side. I'm just being careful trying not to cut the vellum itself. Okay. 
and then take this piece, put it here. That way these match and then these match. That's why I wanted to cut it in half instead of using a full piece. I'm just trying to get it all the way to the edge over there. Perfect. Alright, we'll trim that. Uh, a little straighter would be nice. There we go. And then we can trim this side. Okay. Oh, that is so cool. I love it, but yeah, see how it dries clear? That's the other side. Oh, you're poking out. That's too long. Boop. Okay. All right, let's see. What do you look like now? Oh, that's pretty. I love the sound of that one. So very cool. Ooh, and then we can add this lace kind of throughout a little bit too. I think that would be fun. All right, let's see if we can find my whole bunch of things. Oh, look, there it is. <laughs> it's right there. Now, hopefully it will behave itself and it will punch these guys out. Uh, you know? Pretty sure it's supposed to go in there. I feel like that's really small though. Yeah, I feel like that's really small. And now I'm not going to be able to get this off. Um, do I have a knife? Come on. Where is that? And then we can kind of put these throughout. Like if we want to put a pocket here or a tag somewhere. I think that would be really cute. Ooh, I know, we can put them on like tags instead of, um, let's see what this looks like. That's cute. That would actually look like that. It'd go like that. I actually like it better if it would go like that though. I like the round side out instead of the flat side. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, that is something to play with though. I think I need a bigger circle punch though because that's a lot of image that's not punched. I have a bigger one but I don't think I have between one inch and um, 
two inch. Well, there's two and a quarter. That's way too big. Um, what are you at? No, that's an inch too. Okay, well, I don't know. I think that's something that I can see if I can play with and figure out and maybe get a, a punch that's bigger. Maybe one and a half punch or one and a quarter punch because it seems like it's just, it seems like it would do better if it was bigger, you know? So I'm going to see if I can find a bigger punch, which means those will have to wait. Oh, look, it's 45 minutes already. Wow. Time flies, man. I'm trying to put that in upside down. I'm like, why won't you go? Because it's not the right direction. All right. Okay, cool. So we managed to get the guts of this together, which is kind of cool. So that's the cover. And I'm going to see if I can find some corners because I really want to put some corners on there. And then I will find some sort of embellishment or something to kind of add to the front cover of this. And we mostly played with the vellum. Although getting all of the pages together is definitely a plus. Because that is pretty time consuming just to do that part, as you can tell. So yeah, that's it. We managed to get all of our pages together. And then, where's my middle page? Oh, it's right here. Turn the page thingy. Okay. So, and then we're gonna do it all over again. So I do wanna find something to go on here. I'm just not sure what exactly yet. But I do wanna find something to put on here. Not sure yet. So anyway, that will be it for today's video. Thank you for coming along this journey with me. And um, we're going to just keep working on this um, design team project because I would like to get this finished sooner rather than later. So it's not just another thing that I need to get done. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.